Oh oh. <laughs> Come on, please kill him. Please kill him. Nice. I knew it. I knew it. What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas here on the Money Machines and today we are playing a 1v1 matchup on a beautiful map for Survising in BFME1 on the patch 2.22 and again against Dunadine, you know, one of the best 1v1 players ever in the history of BFME1 and hopefully we can pull this off with the Isengard army. Okay, so at the beginning of each game, very important step is to wall check to figure out if it's a good faction or an evil faction. Um, it seems to be an um, evil faction, so we're gonna cancel the Uruk pit and build three furnaces in total. I mean, it can be Isengard or Mordor, but doesn't matter. What matters is if it's good or evil. I'm gonna, you know, double check. It's evil indeed. When you miss wall check, you know, at the beginning, it's like a huge handicap. When you play Isengard, obviously, you wanna always pick up the Warchant. Palantir is just nothing in compared to Warchant. And it's against Mordor. Okay, so this matchup used to be a tough matchup in the patch 1.06 um, hopefully we managed to make it a bit more easier for Isengard because the later the game goes on, uh, the harder it's gonna become for Isengard but fortunately for us, we are not a regular Isengardian, okay? Okay, I'm gonna build up the Uruk pit now and um, that's very important because when we don't do that, the Mordor orcs, they will take over the map and he has a furnace and a orc pit inside the castle. So he's also repairing. You know, there are not huge, huge differences between a good player and a great player. Dunadine for sure is a great player. I would consider myself as a good player. Um, Dunadine has definitely more experience in the 1v1 department in compared to me, especially in the past, you know, five to six years. And you need to always pay attention to the small things. Like the second I attack his lumber mill, he's immediately repairing it, even though it can't save the lumber mill, but it's about buying time, keeping the Uruks busy. I mean, I don't think this is gonna work out for you. My Uruks, they should be able to, I'm gonna ignore this, you know? The Orc, they don't deal too much damage to my Uruk pit, and my tower should be able to defend this just in time. Okay, I mean, in a 1-on-1 -on -one situation, the Orcs, they don't stand a chance against the Uruks, but in a 1v2 situation with the Eye of Sauron, it's definitely a different story. And we gotta keep in mind that Uruks, they cost us 200 each, while Orcs are for free, so trading Uruks for Orcs without achieving too much is just not worth it, unless you are able to destroy a settlement, or unless you are able to keep your settlements protected. And, you know, going for a 1v1 or 2v1 trade is just not worth it. Because he will eventually keep recruiting more orcs. I mean, Mordor can even afford to go for like two, three, four orc pits in this matchup and just basically spam out Isengard from the entire map. And that's our first game. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to play more games tonight. Um, you know, because for the World Championship, we also need practice. Uh, Dunedin is in, I'm also in. And there is a high chance we might meet later on in the tournament. Just for your information, uh, this Sunday is going to be the final stage, I mean, the last day of the group stage. Then starting from Sunday and Monday, we will be able to jump into the final stage of the tournament. Remember, we forgive me one and Rise of the Witch King World Championship tournament simultaneously. So pretty much at the same time. And most of the games, including my own gameplay, will eventually be streamed on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standard. So, you know, if you haven't already, make sure to follow me there. I would love to meet you in the upcoming live stream. Okay, the plan is to group in the middle of the map in Warchant all together. We can now also recruit Berserker, which is a very great you know unit to deal with the Mordor Orcs. Because Berserker they have like this splash damage, which means with every single hit they can hit multiple orcs at the same time and kill them at the same time. I mean, I'm not gonna go inside the base because I don't think I can deal damage to the base yet without blades and armor. But I wanna deal economical damage, that's very important. Okay, beautiful. Nice. -o. Okay, we can also try to creep this one in the meantime. The key to victory is going to be, of course, to get to the industry power spike as soon as possible. We will need that. Because unlike Mordor, Isengard actually needs a little bit more time to get into the mid-game power spike. 
So basically we need an armory. We need fire arrows, heavy armor, forge blades, maybe not, but definitely the banner carry upgrade. Remember Mordor got a couple of buffs and adjustments in this patch 2.22 and one of them, few of them not directly to Mordor, but definitely in favor of Mordor, for example, the fear effects. So basically in the previous versions of the patch of the patches in BFME1, the fear effects could completely get nullified by buy, buying banner carry upgrade. That's not possible anymore in the patch 2.22. You need to have a bare minimum level 3 unit or you need to have a hero which offers you fear resistant. So in our case, it's going to be Lord with level 5, which is not easy to get. And also Saruman, which also is a hero that is quite expensive and not easy to be recruited. So Nazgul, definitely more affordable, even though the same price for the Mordor like for Isengard. But remember, we need Armory, which Mordor doesn't. Okay, I mean, I think we are not looking too bad. Um, I don't know about the entire map though, we need to kind of scout. My multitasking is kind of bad today, I'm being honest, you know. <laughs> Normally what you want to do is you want to send workers throughout the entire map, but I just... You know, maybe I cannot play and talk at the same time, maybe that's not my skill level. <laughs> I mean, I can do that definitely, but not against Dunedain. So excuse me when there are gonna be a few moments of silence during the gameplay because I just wanna, you know, make sure to win this one if I can. Oh damn, here's a mountain troll. So we cannot go for the blade rush anymore. So basically the blade rush means like an early rush potential for Isengard against Mordor to deny Mordor to get to the lead game. But in this case we failed already because Mordor is already a troll on the field. Which is good for us because we have the information now that means we don't have to buy blades. We can go for banner, fire and heavy armor. And never recruit Uruks and give them blades because there is no reason to. And you will see in this game it's gonna be harder and harder in the you know in the later stages of the game. Especially when it comes to keep map control against Mordor. Remember Mordor is a faction with potentially the chance to recruit three flying heroes. And keeping map control against that... Oh my goodness, man! The orc level 2 slaughtered two of my berserkers! The new bloodthirst ability coming in clutch there for the orcs of Mordor. Hmm. Okay, we need to, I mean... The problem is, again, map control. We don't know what <laughs> Mordor has. I'm, I'm assuming he's creeping a lot. Because he had a mountain troll on the field. And we need to be just hoping for the best at this point. You know, we need to try to get to stall the game out until we get our army. So, what I've discovered in the past, also when I was playing on the patch 2.22, but also in the patch 1.06, pretty much it's unchanged, is that when you play against Mordor, you don't need to make combos. Like the Uruk crossbowman combo, they are not very important because most of the time you deal actually with orcs, trolls, or Nazgus. In any of these cases, the, the combos, they don't add enough value. So the only time when the combos would be actually good is when you go to the attack, to attack the main castle, and then the Uruks in the front of the combo can absorb the damage from the towers. But against Nazgul's trolls, it's just not helpful, but it's even bad because when you combine units, you lose a lot of movement speed. So basically, you have not a chance anymore to dodge. Also, when it comes to fight against catapults, for example, the solo unit, in this case, crossbowman, they can do that way better. Okay, I was able to save one of them. The worst thing is when you lose a, um, a crossbowman with fire, they are very, you know, expensive and important. The good thing is when you save one of the units from the battalion and you give them banner, they can respawn slowly over time. In this way, you can actually extend your command points even further and get yourself a huge advantage. So we can now definitely capture the outpost. And, you know, again, keeping map control against early on orc spam, later on Nazgul Witch King, I don't know, man. It feels like impossible to me. Maybe it's just me, but it's hard. Again, that's not even the best map for Mordor. Imagine Mordor on a map like Westfold. Fortunately, we can put those crossbowmen inside the tower. There. And then the outpost can defend itself. Okay.
Oh boy. <laughs> you love to see it, boys. You love to see it. What can men do against such a reckless seat? I mean, oh boy. This is not good, man. This is not good. I don't even have towers yet. Oh man. I'm so poor, man. I'm so poor. Okay. I mean, it's it's not it's not it's not the end of the world. I think we can still survive this. We have an outpost at the end of the day, and we have a fire arrow upgraded crossbowman inside the outpost. It means I don't think Mordor can destroy this anytime soon. So we need time. We need money. We need also Saruman later on. That's very important because our Lourdes is only level 1. And in order to get fear resistant, to gain immunity against Screech of the Nazgul and Witch King, we need to have a hero with fear resistant leadership, or we need to get the units to level 3, which is not easy because remember. Mordor has the chance to have eventually three Screech abilities. So basically, Nazgul number one, Screech, fear. Wait for the fear duration to go off, use Screech from the Nazgul number two. Then wait for the duration and use Screech from the Nazgul number three, in this case the Witch King. And long story short, you cannot fight for like 20 seconds, which is more than enough time for Mordor to wipe out your entire army. Okay, I mean, like, I was expecting him to attack me with a giant army at this point. Um, but I think he's just going for a second Nazgul and Witch King. Uh-oh, maybe I can kill him here. Let's use Cripple, please. No, this is so close, man. Look, he's so smart, you know, he's targeting my Berserker. If you don't know, when you target something with a flying hero, in this case, the Nazgul, but also with Eagles and Witch King, they gain the speed bonus. So when they attack, they are way faster than their normal speed when they are normal flying. So you can meet, you know, again, like all, like I said at the beginning of the game, there are only a few small differences between a good player and a great player. And those small things, in it, you know, when you kind of add them all together, they make actually a huge difference. So there is definitely something I can learn about Dunedain from Dunedain. Um... And macro is one of these things. I believe my micro is not that bad. But the thing is, I kind of lose focus in the mid to late game, you know. That's the one thing I need to improve. To be honest, I've never seen myself as a player in this game. I always wanted to become like a community manager, you know, streamer, content creator, caster. And Durandine was spamming games uh, back in the day. I mean, I think he's like very active in the past seven to eight years. And he's younger than me too, right? I mean, now you can tell me whatever you want, but the age is also very important. The age is important, boys. Like, a 24, 23 years old boy, <laughs> and a 32 guy, 30 years old me, the dad of two kids, there should be a difference. Oh, nice burst, nice burst. With the war chant, everyone was attacking at the same time, so nice burst. Very good, very good, very good. Amazing. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> wow. Just wow. What can men do against such a reckless seat? Luckily, our furnace are, uh, furnace are hitting level 3. So they will be able to defend themselves. And the Nazgûls, they don't deal too much damage to the building. So that's kind of like a, like a downside. Oh my goodness, what is this hit? The splash damage, you know, like the area damage when they're hitting you. He hits not only the time. I mean, the way the Nazgul attack works is he's gonna always be able to pick. Oh, nice. Beautiful. I mean, that's good for me. I mean, reviving the Nazgul is gonna be for free for Mordor, but again, it's gonna be time consuming. And time is exactly what we need in this game. Look at the Witch King. <laughs> he's looking for the Ring Bearer. Okay, I think it's time to attack now. Um, I'm, even though I'm scared a little bit, I'm being honest. <laughs> Because, again, the Witch King is still remaining on the field, and I will try to save up for Saruman at this point. In a dream world, you want to get Lourdes level 5. That's very important to get the additional damage leadership. You know, when you, again, you know, when you fight against Trolls or Mumakis or Nazgûls or Witch King, there is no pro profit from having armor leadership. You want to burst them. You want to burst them ASAP, okay? Oh, okay. I don't think this is a good idea from the Witch King. Hmm. Oh. I see you. 
12 them. So, you know, <laughs> this guy is always forcing me into decision making. I, I, like, he's forcing me. Should I go keep, should I keep going? Should I come back to defend my outpost? I don't know, man. I want to gather power points. We need to get to Freezing Rain. So, in a Dream Wolf, you don't want to fight against the Troll Army without the Freezing Rain. Because with the with the leadership of the Witch King, I Drummer Troll in Darkness. They can actually wipe out my combos in a Cosmo Man. So, we want to stall the game out until we get to Freezing Rain Point. Oh boy. Dude, there comes the darkness already. Like, boys, I'm telling you, Mordor is actually very strong in the mid to lead game. Because the thing about the orcs is when you lose them, you gain power points from it and you get you lose nothing. Right? You basically get the same power points like the player who is killing your orcs. So there is zero downside. You lose, you win. You know what I mean? Like there is nothing like this with the good factions. So you you can only win when you kill stuff. But in the evil faction. But especially Mordor. Oh boy. We need Saruman here. Oh man. We want to fight them on the, on the land. On the land we can maybe kill them. Because land is making their leadership to zero. Nice. Kill them one by one. Kill the last rem remaining troll please. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Shoot! Please dude. Come on now. Don't shoot the, don't shoot the witch king. Just shoot the troll. Okay. Uh, <laughs> dude, this is kind of crazy man. Okay, I mean, the Witch King can definitely clean this up, right? We have not many units remaining on the field. I think we want to we wanna peel. But we, I mean, the problem is, again, he's splitting the map into multiple pieces. And because of the mobility advantage, he can do that. I can't. So I got to make a choice where I want to be. I can't be in every single spot at the same time. And I cannot split my army either. Because keep in mind that Fear Resistance kicks in with level 3. I mean, at this point, it's about spamming crossbowmen. It's all we can do. I would love to recruit Warp Riders. I would love to recruit Berserker. But again, at this point, I believe it, it, they will just feed power points and bring Mordor closer and closer to Balrog. Remember, he was using Rain, and we had like four power points in the bank. So he's going to be eventually getting to Balrog summon way sooner in compared to us. And that's bad. You know, we can't... <laughs> Like, the Balrog cannot win you the game, but it can definitely win you the game when you have a lot of map control. So against Balrog, what you want to do is you want to be the controller of the entire map. You want to have outpost control, settlement control. That means even if more, uh, Balrog summoned on your base, you have still camps or outposts or settlements, you know, to buy your castle back, you won't be defeated. But if you have no map control and there is a Balrog summon on your base, GG well played. Just quit the game. Dude, the Nazgûls are so annoying, man. Oof. Oh, man, this is rough. This is rough. This is tough. Maybe the age of the Uruks is over. And maybe the day of the Orc has come. The problem that we have is, I don't think my army is, you know, strong enough to take down the enemy castle. So we need to kind of rotate again and wait for the Freezing Rain. It's like, make a bigger army too. We have only 221 population, so we need definitely more than that. But we can definitely hit and run. So we want to kill the buildings in the front. We don't want to go deep. We don't want to dive in. Oh man, you see, he's annoying though. Because he keeps attacking my outpost. He knows he can't approach his army now with fear resistance too from Saruman. Oh, the, we need to fireball this. Catapult. Annoying. Oh, okay. It's fine now. Nice. Okay. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> look at the minimap, dude. I can't do anything. You see, that's what I'm talking about. I was trying to make a second army too, but I can't. It's pointless. Maybe I need to sp split my Lourdes and Saruman. I mean, again, I need Lourdes level 5, though, before I can split them. But luckily, I have Rain now. So I want to wait with the rain. There is no re no reason to use it right now at this point. I want to blast this catapult. <laughs> oh, it's only 50% HP. Okay, nice. I think it's time to disengage because the cavalry is coming. The flyers are coming. And my Saruman is very low. So <laughs> he might be able to commit on us. 
When we lose this army, we actually lose the game at this point. You know, we have like zero map control. When we lose the heroes, Lourdes and Saruman, it's pretty much GG. Oh man, leave me alone with your Nazgûs. Come on now, it's annoying. We need Saruman to be level 8, boys, for the will of Saruman. That's also gonna be very important. I mean, you see, he's not choosing to fight me. He's kind of using um, the flying heroes to gather power points. So it's very important for us to not feed a lot of power points. Because what he's trying to do is kind of obvious. He's trying to stall the game until he gets to 20 power points. Summon the Balrog to kill my army. Because there's also like the sec secondary strength of the Balrog summon. You can summon it on top of the enemy army and wipe out everything. So in order to deny this, we need to demolish the buildings in time. Make sure to not lose our heroes and crossbowmen. Overall, be in a good spot. I mean, you know, especially the towers and the crossbowmen, they are giving a lot of power points. Like Furnace, Slaughterhouse, they, they, don't, they, they don't do that much. But again, in this case, it's like a long, long game already. I think it's like, what, 15 minutes game? Okay. We need to control the area. I don't know what's... We, guys, we have not seen the top side of the map for the last 10 minutes. And I think there is a chance we might not be able to see the top side of the map for the next 15 minutes either. I mean, the good thing is with them, Saruman being around, we can keep leveling up. You see, we have a level 5 crossbowman. Each level is so important and impactful. Get to the point in which our units are gonna eventually one-shot Nazgûl and Witch King. And with the speechcraft of Saruman, we can keep doing this all the time. Keep leveling up over and over and over again. Do it. Nice. Ooh, beautiful. So you can level up the crossbowmen from level 1 to level 2, but you cannot level them up with level from level 2 to level 3. You need to use 2 times speechcraft. Every unit requires different amount of experience to get to level 2, level 3. Um, the, you know, the evil units, the crossbowmen, the Uruks, they, are, they need much more, they require much more EXP in compared to peasants or soldiers, you know? Okay, that's good. Oh, oh, uh, we can kill him, we can kill him, kill him, kill him. Please, fireball already, fireball, fireball, fireball. My fireball missed, by the way, guys. That's what happened. That happens. I mean, it's like, I don't know, like, it's something you can't even fix, I believe. Because it happens when the Nazgul is turning his back to you, and the fireball, oh my. Come on, steal, 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 steal. We covered the land. I mean, they have no leadership on our land, by the way, that's for sure. We stole two of the trolls. I want to send them in. Oh, that was looking scarier than it was actually at the end of the day. Oh my goodness, I was like, I didn't pay attention for like a single second and I was about to lose my army. Again, losing Saruman and Lourdes, that would be literally GG, man. Okay, let's kill the catapult. I mean, we have now the bottom side of the map under our control, but you see, even though I'm trying to get the map controlled with the Berserk, oh, we have a level 5 unit. I'm trying to get the map control with the Berserker, but whenever I do that, he's gonna send his Nazgûls to kill them all. And every single time I'm feeding power points, but I think I have no choice. We need to treat map control for power points at this point. I mean, the problem is, you see the rotation is so slow, <laughs> you know? There is a river in which is kind of dividing the bottom side from the middle side, so we need to kind of walk over the river or around the, around the river. Hold on. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this guy was building a ballista or the ram army. <laughs> I knew it because he has so much time and money. I was like, what is he doing? He needs to have either, uh, like 20 trolls or I don't know what he has, but I think he was making a ram. Look how tanky the rams are. They're <laughs> demolishing my buildings too. What? 
I've never seen this before, dude. That's so funny. Oh my goodness. I thought the fire damage is gonna kill them fast enough, but they don't. They are, the rams are very resistant against fire too. Look at them, look at them going. Oh my goodness. I'm happy that I didn't lose my Uruk fit, man. That's very important building. Okay, we need to go now to the top side. <laughs> but this was funny, dude. Do not die. The crazy dude who is making crazy stuff. Again, boys, we're gonna play eventually more games. I, that means we're gonna I'm gonna eventually get smashed in multiple games tonight tonight. So uh, but you know, in either case I will upload the videos or the games one by one. So in order to not miss the future uploads, make sure to subscribe to the channel too, right? If you haven't already, it's so free. And also when you do that already, you know, when you are down there. Make sure to leave a like and also comment because it's engagement and it helps out a ton. It would help to get more people to see that the BFME 1 is not dead and not even in 2022. You wanna do this, Nazgul? You wanna do this? Beat them in. Look, the level 5 units are gonna hit very hard now. You see? You see the damage output with level 5 war chanted unit? He's gonna die. You see that? That's very good. You can also kill the trolls in the meantime. What a micro around though, it's very important, micro around. Yeah, you see? You see the level advantage, I'm telling you, it's so important in this game. Like, you know, in, in at, this, at this point of the game you can do that, what I'm doing. Because you have like highly leveled units, at bare minimum they need to be level 3, level 4, level 5. Okay. I mean, the only thing I just... Come on, kill him, please, one more shot. Oh my goodness, one more shot you needed to do, man. One more shot, one more shot, man. The problem is we have... We are kind of trading the outputs, you know. I'm taking over the top side, he's taking over the bottom side again. So, not the ideal situation, because, you know, one for one, it's not what we are looking for. We want to actually gain something out of that, which we definitely don't. And... I'm scared to go for his main castle. I don't know, man, how many catapults he has on the field. I have no clue. I have no clue, boys. But luckily, with the Berserker, we are able to reclaim map control. The map was never looking that red since the beginning of the game. So I'm proud of myself that I at least got a power point. I mean, this is going to be like a late game situation. I think we, in this game, we're definitely going to get the chance to see Balrogs. I'm telling Balrogs because he might see Balrog from me and definitely going to see also Balrog from Dunedain. Because... When I have 6,000 in the bank, I think Dune is even richer or wealthier because his heroes, when you lose them, you don't need to pay anything. You don't have to upgrade your units. You can spam catapults, trolls, catapults, trolls at this point. And also, Mumakis are very underrated. Like, the thing about the Mumakis is, now you might say to me, but Shanks, Mumas are so weak against fire. That's true, but all you need to do is get a beautiful and lucky trample. That's all it takes. And you can kill Lourdes and Saruman with one single hit. Which is basically a game winning move, right? Because not only it will cost me a ton, you know, like a huge amount of money to revive my, you know, Lourdes and Saruman, but also it will take a long time to get them back. But he is, why is he making those rams, dude? Okay. Oh, but we have freezing rain. So you want to fight this? You want to fight these trolls? But they are running always in 2.22. They are always charging, which gives them the chance to engage and disengage. Oh my goodness. If only a level 6 units. But again, you know, it kind of forces me once again to go to the bottom side. Like, you know, we are struggling with the crossbow, man. Imagine if we would have combos. You cannot keep up with the speed of the Nazgûs. So I'm happy that we never meet combos like the Uruk crossbowman combination because they would be amazing, don't get me wrong, they are very cost efficient, but you have less firepower because you will have to invest lots of your available command points into the Uruks as the front line. Now we don't have to do that, we can recruit even more crossbowmen, but also your movement speed is going to be like 20% 20 less, 20, 20, 20, 20 or 25% less movement speed in compared to non-combos. Oh, here's a Mumai kill pen. Oh man, he's coming, boys. I think we should be in a good spot, though, because we have, like, a lot of crossbowmen in, in the base. So I don't think this trolls, they can achieve too much. He was gaining leadership back by stepping on the enemy land, in this case, on my land. 
But still, trolls, they don't deal too much damage to the building. So they will need definitely a long time to destroy, like, furnace level 3, for example. Oh, boy. Come on, kill this Witch King, please. If we can kill Witch King, that's gonna be so huge. Come on, please kill him. Please kill him. Nice! That's huge! Nice. Okay. I mean, I take this every day of the week, you know? I take this every day of the week. That's beautiful. Okay. I mean, we killed the Witch King again. Yeah, he can revive his Witch King for free, but it's going to buy us so much time. And we know Witch King. Without Witch King, you can't really do much. It's like the essential part of your army when you play Mordor. It's the MVP unit. The GOAT of Mordor. The greatest of all time. When Sauron is not there, which he can't be in this game. And also means, a, you know, much more or less leadership. Okay, dodge, 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 dodge. You see, that's what you can do with the crossbow, man. You can... There are too many catapults, though. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to save the level 5 unit if I can. The map is looking good. I think at this point we can kind of gather all together and go for a big attack on the, on the main castle. So, good thing is we have almost 13 power points in the bank. I don't mind about lose... Oh my goodness. Maybe not... <laughs> I think we, we need... I mean, we will be losing outpost, but it's fine. Oh, man. It was close, though. We almost killed the Nazgul, too. So, what we can hopefully do is to at least destroy his citadel. The Baradur in the castle. That's gonna slow him down and will make the revive time of the Nazguls and Witch King even longer. But again, we want to make sure to not lose a lot. I'm not sure, though, you know, to make it crystal clear with you guys, I'm not sure how close Dunedain is for the Balrog summon. Might be very close. And if that's the case, he can legit summon his Baldrog on my army and I will lose the game out of that. Because he can easily kill my Saruman and my Lords. So I'm, I'm, I'm 7 power points away from the Baldrog. I'm pretty certain that he needs less than I do. But the question is, how much less? 2 power points less? 5 power points less? Or only... No, I don't know. I don't know, man. And that drives me crazy. Not knowing this, it's kind of bad. I need to kill this uh, catapult. Oh, we can fireball this, no problem. Take this, trolls. I have like the feeling that I need to split my army a little bit. <laughs> I'm being honest. I think that's what I need to do. My Berserker is killing the catapult. It's very good. This troll shouldn't be able to kill my Sare. Okay. Okay, so I want to have like a two armies and I want to split them up a little bit. And I don't want to lose my entire army with the Balrog summon. The map is looking phenomenal in our favor. We have almost 5k in the bank. So basically, we are able to, you know, buy the castle after destroying it. But it's not even needed. When we destroy the castle, because he has no outpost control, we will become, we will be the winner of this game as Isengard against Mordor. Okay, it's time to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. We see lots of tinted lands, but you can see in the area of the land whose land it is. If it's our land or the opponent land. Let's go ham, boys. I knew it. I knew it! Run! So you want to split up your loot and Saruman. You don't want to go into the... I mean, you need to kind of make him... Force him to make a call. He's... Of course. Of course. You want to get my wizard. Run! Run! Okay, we need to dodge this. Can I... Okay, now... Oh, post inside. Oh, oh, oh. I could use Palantir to get away with him, but it's gonna slow my butt. <laughs> Come here, boy! My Saruman is there. But it's okay, because he just wasted his Balrog like this. I mean, didn't really waste it, but he killed, like, my... He stopped my army, he stopped my Warchant, he killed my Saruman. But the good thing is, when we lose Saruman, we also gain power points out of that, you know what I mean? Oh, never mind, the Balrog has still time, right? Oh, yikes, bro. Okay, it's fine now. Kill this. Oh, we need to kill his catapults. Um, I'm not sure if it's smart without the... Without... Saruman to move on. I want to buy this outpost once again. Oh, we have even a level 3 unit. I didn't even see. <laughs> okay. Oh, dude, this game is going to drive him crazy, man. It's like... And that's what I'm th think. That's what I'm saying, you know. Like, the longer, the longer the game goes on, the more focus I'm losing. Right? And now I'm panicking, because now at this point it's like a race. It's like a time race. Don't lose the level of... Oh my goodness. It's like a time race, because 
uh, we need to win the game or we need to get our own Balrog before he gets the Balrog for the second time. My lure is kind of bugged. And that's, that happens with the Carnage. So when you use Carnage, you want to stop moving for a few seconds and then you, you don't want to use it. Uh, you know, you want to use it, stop moving for like a second, then you can move on. Kill the Nazgul. He's dead. The Nazgul is dead. You see the 60% damage leadership from Lourdes is coming in so clutch. That's very good. But again, we need to look. We, we were rich. We were rich boys. Now we are again poor. Industry will be definitely helpful. We need to wait for Saruman to be back. But again, re long revive time. The the more high, the more leveled a hero is, the longer it takes to get him back. And also, of course, more expensive. And But you see, uh, he is not giving us time to breathe. Kill his catapult. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. Yes, we are so close to Balrog, man. We are so close to Balrog, man. You know, I want to use the Balrog in a way to destroy his full castle. And the way I can do that is to... I need to have an army ready to attack. And I want to use Balrog to absorb the damage, make sure to kill stuff. But I don't know if I can do it. I think we need Lourdes. I mean, we need Saruman, I mean. We need Saruman back in the business. That's going to be very important. But I don't know if we can wait that long, man. I don't know. Like, of course, the Balrog revive time or reload time is around 8 minutes. So we have still time. We don't need to be worried. But even now, it, every single second counts. Every single second matters. Guys, at this point, please pause the video when you're watching and let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think I'm going to win this game or not? Do you think I can win this game? Look at the minimap. Look at the current situation. He has summoned Balrog already. And can I win this game? Before you watch further, make sure to comment. Come on, come on. Saruman is back. Okay. Good. Oh my, he's coming again from the top side. Ooh. Kill his trolls. We need to control the outpost. Very important. We kill the... Okay. I don't think this attack is... Gonna, this rams. This guy is driving me crazy, man. Stop. Stop doing this, man. Stop ramming me like this. Okay, we have the Balrog. He out, he get the outpost, but it's okay. We can get this. Oh, he's coming. I have no rain, but I can eventually use my... Oh, my. Dude, I want... No, don't knock him down like this. Please don't. Saruman, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Saruman, dude. Hey, can you imagine? A troll is knocking down a wizard on the ground so many times. Come on, Saruman. I'm going to heal you. Run. Run, you fool. We need to kill this witch king. We need to aim manually on the witch king. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. There is no way I can survive with him. He's, I don't want to even check him anymore. Oh, man. I wanted to get my Saruman to my army. So now I have to use it, right? I have to use it now. We need to also recruit the Uruk for the, for the, for the ram. Oh, man. Uh, this is so bad. Airport too. I mean, at this point, we have to go for it. We cannot... Finish his piece, but we need to try to deal at least some damage to him. I mean, the plan is to destroy the troll cage and the siege works and also his citadel, the Baradur. Because he lost one of the na oh, he just got a Nazgul back, dude. Dude, the timing. And that's what that, that, that happens when you hesitate, when you are not sure, you know, you need to be fast. Think fast, do fast, win fast. What an intense game, dude. I mean, map control is looking good for us, but, I mean, and I'm also being honest, huge shout out to Dunedain, he didn't spam too many catapults, like, I think he had that money and the time to actually spam tons of catapults, and they can be hella annoying for Isengard, but he didn't do that, it's a friendly match though, it's not like a tournament or something, we are just having fun, uh, because we are working currently on the next version of the patch 2.22, and those matches are very important to get enough um, knowledge about the current balance stage and then we can kind of figure out what needs to be changed what needs to be improved what needs to be nerfed what needs to be buffed you know like the testing and discovering new meta is the most you know fun part you might have noticed eventually the patch will point to this way faster in the uh, you know different patches uh, and for that reason a lot of adjustments need to be made and i always keep saying it because it's important this is not a finished patch okay this is not done that's why it comes with a launcher with an auto update button and we keep working on it 
every every day pretty much right every week we are working on it maybe 10 hours every week at bare minimum and then we got the feedback we play ourselves to understand the current stage of the balance and then we improve it we nerf it we adjust it in order to make the game better sometimes you need to take a risk so instead of only criticizing when you guys try it when you guys play it let me know in discord there is a dedicated channel which is called feedback 2.22 which i always read i always read all the messages so if you have like feedback about you know adjustments suggestions let me know okay so i'm assuming his balrog is almost back up maybe it's already back up uh, rain is active but luckily we will be able to destroy his full castle that's very good for us i mean they have a very look you know strong looking beast with like multiple level three furnaces right it, it's like lead game in isengard it's going to be very very strong and uh, we can also at this point just go for the outpost and i mean again i'm very worried about that he might be able he might be able to recapture the space you know we can go for devastation and get more money but no i don't know man we are we need 5k though we need 5k to buy the castle and that's what i want to do but i also need army come saruman to this location i know he has baldrock boys i mean that's i know it at this point it's like you have to know it right because he used it way before we did it, and we have the Balrog halfway up again, so he definitely has the Balrog 100%. So we need to kind of figure out what to do at this point. I don't want to go all full commitment with all my army. I want to have like two, three armies, separate my heroes. Make sure to not... Because he will use Balrog here, I think. I knew it, I knew it. Ooh, he's gonna try to kill my Saruman. Alright, we need to get Lurz here. I mean, he, you know, that's the thing. You can summon Balrog on top of the enemy army. Please don't miss the fireball. Please don't miss the fireball. Okay, cancel it. <laughs> Dude, you are so old, wizard. You are so old, man. Uh oh. You wanna kill my Lurz? I can heal my Lurz with the will of Saruman, though. Let's bring my Saruman next to him. What is Balrog doing? I think he's coming to my bees. <laughs> oh. Heal him, heal him, heal him, heal him. Heal him, heal him. Heal him now! Last possible second. Now we can... You see? The Vombo Convo voice. The crater in the Uruk. The leader of the Uruks. You wanna chase down my lords like that? You wanna do me like that? Hell no. Ooh. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, my. What a breath fire, dude. He killed the Orphan in three furnaces. Don't wanna mess up with the Baldrock of Morgoth. No! Oh, my goodness. No, guys... Guys, are we gonna lose this game? We need 5,000. We need to buy this castle from our opponent. It's not free for all game. It means we can buy it. It's not against the rules. In a one-on-one -on -one situation or 2v2 situation, you can buy it in a FFE as a you know free for all. You can't. You can, of course, but it's against the rules. It's like a gentleman's agreement kind of thing. Okay, we need 5,000. <laughs> we need 5k, dude. Alright, we need. I think when we destroy the outpost, we can still win this game. Like, he's trying to destroy my castle. The question is, can we destroy his outpost? Because I'm pretty sure that he has 5,000. Mordor in lead game with scavenger from the spell box should have unlimited money. Look, he's trying to repair. He's trying to stall. And he has combos in base. I want to buy this castle first, though. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. All right. He's coming to the outpost. We need to be fast. Every single second matters. Every se Look, he keeps rebuilding stuff, dude. We need to kill the Citadel, man. Oh, boy. Let's use this. Kill the Citadel, just kill the Citadel, ignore everything else. Ignore everything else, kill the Citadel, because we are about to lose our own outpost. Come on, destroy the outpost, destroy this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it GG, I'm gonna make an offensive call GG to demotivate them. Look, hold on. Destroy this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it offensive GG. I don't know, <laughs> this is so close. Come on, kill, 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 kill. Use this. I'm gonna call it, boys. I'm gonna call it offensive GG. So he will think he, he, it's over. <laughs> I hope he's not gonna be able to finish it. Come on, come on, come on. Kill the last remaining building, please. Oh, he destroyed it. But he needs time. He needs time. He needs like five seconds before he can buy it. Yes. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys. Hallelujah, baby!